Okay, so before, they sometimes gave you like tangent of theta equals three. Then they would tell you, oh yeah, and cosine of theta is greater than zero. And then they would ask, what are sine theta and cosine theta? So we would have to reconstruct a reference triangle. And with cosine of theta, we would have to figure out which quadrant is it in. Is it a 1, 2, 3, 4? And then after we've reconstructed it, we would start doing the Sokotoa things to get the fractions for sine and cosine. Here's a different way. We're going to use Pythagorean identities. And so tan, square, tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. That is the one of the Pythagorean identities we're going to use here. So let me write that out again. Okay, and if you don't remember it, um, just remember the original one. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and then either divide by sine squared or cosine squared, depending on what you need. So here, since I saw tangent, um, I am going to use this now to figure out all the other information. So I'm going to plug in what I know. Tan of theta is 3. So I put that in here. That would be 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, and now we have an equation to solve. All right, now instead of writing this um, as secant squared equals 10, I'm going to write this now as 10 equals 1 over cosine squared theta. And I'm going to do the switcheroo. So I'm going to rewrite this as cosine squared theta equals 1 over 10. Now last step here. I almost have cosine of theta already. I have to square root both sides. So I'm for now going to put a plus or minus the square root of 1 tenth. Uh, when you rationalize that, you're going to get root 10 over 10. Okay. Now, I have to decide if this is going to be positive or negative. Um, lucky for me, they just laid it out for me. Cosine of theta has to be positive, so I know that this has to be the positive version. I know that it's going to be root 10 over 10. All right. Now, that's the first part. I have to now go find sine. And so what I'm going to do is there is a Pythagorean identity that involving sine and cosine, right? So we're, let's just use that. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. And plug in what I know. So cosine theta is this. Okay, so I'm putting square root of 10 all over 10 squared equals 1. And now I can just solve for sine. Sine squared theta plus, now think about this, you're going to have a 10 on top after you square, and then a 100 on the bottom. You're going to go back to 1 tenth. Now, if you thought about it like way back here, cosine squared is just 1 tenth. So instead of putting root 10 over 10 back in, I could have just replaced cosine squared with 1 tenth. But it doesn't really matter. You get to the same spot. Now I'm going to subtract 1 tenth on both sides. And so 10 10 over minus 1 tenth would be 9 tenth. And we're almost done. So this would be sine of theta equals the square root of 9 tenths, which would be 3 over root 10. Okay, and this also is plus or minus because we square rooted. So let's leave that in there. And then let's rationalize. So I multiply by root 10 on top and on bottom. I have 3 root 10 all over 10. So the question is, is that a positive or negative sign? Um, based on what they gave us, it has to be positive. Here's how I know. Tangent of theta is 3. And tangent is sine over cosine. So if cosine is positive, that means sine had to be positive too. All right. So there are my two answers. Instead of drawing a triangle, we could just keep using these identities. Okay. So I'm going to give one to you to try on your own. Call this my try problem. So we're going to find sine and cosine if tangent of theta equals 5 and cosine of theta is less than zero. So you are, again, you're finding sine 
and cosine. So now would be the time to pause the video and try it out. Okay, so the answer. Uh, we are going to use the same identity because we're given tan. If it was cotangent, you would use the other Pythagorean identity. But here we're going to use again tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared theta. And sorry, when I do it, identity, sometimes I drop the variable if it's the same variable every time. So I'll put my theta back in there. Now tangent is 5, so this is going to be 5 squared. It's going to be 26 on that side. And then we're going to square both sides. Well, let's not do that first. Let's think of this as 1 over cosine squared. And then we'll do the switcheroo. So the cosine squared equals 1 over 26. And when I square root both sides, cosine of theta equals, uh, it would be the square root of this, but we got to rationalize. And so the square root of 26 over 26 would be your answer. Is it going to be positive or negative? We know it's got to be negative. Okay. So by the way, when we find our sine, we're, we also know that the sine has to be negative because uh, sine over cosine is tangent. If cosine is negative, sine has to be negative too so that it's a positive phi. Okay, so again, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And I know cosine squared of theta was 1 over 26. So I'm just going to jump there. I'm just going to put plus 1 over 26 equals 1. And then when I subtract 1 over 26 to both sides, I have sine squared theta equals 25 over 26. Square root both sides. And I know it's going to be negative. Square root of 25 all over square root of 26. And then we rationalize. So it's a lot of little math work here. Square root of 25 on top is 5. Square root of 26 all over 26. Shoo. Okay, so there's the sign.